church and it was a lot of fun, but I missed, uh, I missed this group right here and, uh, and I missed all of you, so I'm glad, very glad to be back with you. So it's a delight. Thank you, Danny. Thank you uh, also to Trey. And just a little, in a couple of minutes or a few minutes, uh, whenever the preacher gets done, we're going to have a baptism, so we're excited right. about that. And uh, we'll baptize anybody else who wants to get baptized today, by the way. Uh, but we're delighted that you're here. We get to pray together right now, so that's what we want to do. Father, it is such a joy to be here with these uh, beautiful people. Father, I thank you that you promised that you would meet with us when we gather in your name, and I know that, that that's what we've done here today. We're gathering in the name of Christ because we love him. Uh, we need him. We're we are part of royalty, as the song said, but we're also still beggars because uh, we cannot um, go through life alone. We still remain needy. We still often find <coughs> ourselves crying out to you for help. And I love that. Because you always meet us. You always meet us. Father, I do ask for your spirit to just to fall in this place in a way that we would be drawn to you and we would be, um, be submissive to you and no one else. We're not, just no one else. No one else. We want your blessing on this entire church. We pray in Jesus' name.
forgiveness, especially before we take communion. If we've got something that we have done seriously that uh, 
we need to come to grips with it. We either need to uh, be asking God for forgiveness of what we've done, or we need to talk with the person we may have offended or hurt and, and talk with them about that too. And then coming to communion to Christ is the best way to come because you're ready to take him in. And as it says on the very front of your bulletin, when you see Christ, you see God. You know, he is the image of God to you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you have sent Jesus Christ to this earth to teach us, to help us, and to die for us. And that if we come to him and you for asking forgiveness, all will be forgiven. If as long as we're very serious with that, Lord. And that as we take communion, we are taking in this, uh, this uh, notion or this part of what Jesus has done for us. May we be reminded of that each and every day. And we pray this through Jesus and we say, Amen. Amen. this communion table as Christ is welcoming you here now. And he wanted us to do this. And we do this every Sunday in this particular church. All you got to do is to believe Jesus Christ is your Savior and that he is the Son of God and that he has forgiven his death has helped forgiven you of your sins. At that meal in the upper room they found a good quiet place to meet. They broke bread and Jesus blessed it. And he says, eat this, this represents my body, which is what will be broken for you. And then at the end, they poured the wine and he blessed it. And he says, drink this, this represents my blood, which will wash away your sin.
to you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Amen. The God, merciful and gracious, 
slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. No matter what we do, you think, God, you can't know me. Or, or maybe you don't know God. You say, God, you don't know the things I've done, the things I've ever done. We've all, everyone said that it's good to be bad. We all can say that. If he can save us, of that message. In fact, I'm convinced that God wants us to live in that love. He wants us to enjoy that love. And uh, 
Well, we come to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and before I get there, I think it's something very important that we uh, just take a moment and remember uh, because of the passage that we're about to look at. Here in 1 Corinthians 5, a rather uh, bold, uh, challenging passage, quite frankly, um, I want to make note of the fact that, that you and I live as believers in a state of, 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 of grace. We live in a state of affection, the affection of God. We live in the state of being accepted by God, those who have believed, those who have trusted. Let me give you a couple of verses just to substantiate that so that we're, we're clear about something, that salvation doesn't come by works or that you're, you're a certain level of goodness uh, or a certain level of, uh, you know, whatever, but it's, it's, it's a matter of uh, the fact that those who trust in Christ alone, not in themselves, not in someone else, not in a, a church, but just simply in Christ, God uh, gives himself entirely to those people. Uh, Romans 8, 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. I love that. No condemnation. Can you imagine we go through life? Like he said, even more bad, there's no kind, he's not condemning us. Uh, he, we don't walk in a state of condemnation with him. We don't. And it's important that we begin to see ourselves from the, what he says and not what uh, somebody else has said to you. God looks at us and he accepts us. He receives us. He enjoys us. He delights in us. That's the reality. Uh, we could go on to other passages, too. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. By grace you're saved through faith, not of yourselves, the gift of God. We could look at uh, another passage, which would be uh, Philippians 3, 9, which basically says that, that uh, I, and as Paul said, I come to God not with a righteousness of my own, but the righteousness that is given to me through faith. And so, therefore, I get to come to God boldly, the Bible says in Hebrews 4. So, I, I want to say that. So now what I want to do, because we know that's true, I want you to understand that, uh, that what God does is he gives us this free grace, but he also has a different way of living for us. I'll say it again. He leads us in a different way of living. He's got principles that he has for us. This is very important. But he doesn't want you to do it on your own. He doesn't want you to live it on your own. See, I, I love it because remember I gave that passage in, in, in Romans 8, 1. It says, there's therefore now no condemnation to, to those who are in Christ. How do you get there? Do you think about that? It is through receiving Christ. It is through believing in the Son. It's very important. Now watch this. The, the next part of the verse says, they are those who don't give place to the flesh, but they walk in the Spirit. Those are the same people. Those who have no more condemnation also now have the Holy Spirit, eh? so we can live differently. Now, let's read this passage together, uh, beginning in verse 1 of chapter 5. If you guys could pull that up with me, and we're just kind of, those of you, and I, I do encourage you to bring your Bible, man, or your phone, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and read along, man. It's really good stuff, I'm telling you. Uh, watch this. Here we go. So I'm going to let, uh, I'll, I'll read it from here. Uh, it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and such sexual immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles that a man has his father's wife, uh, and you are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he who has done this deed might be taken away from, uh, from among you. For I indeed, as absent in the body, but present in the spirit, have already judged, as though I were present, him who has done, who has so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together along with my spirit, with the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Verse 6. Your glorying is not good. 
good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Therefore, purge out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, since you truly are unleavened. For indeed, Christ, our Passover, was sanctified for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexually immoral people. Yet I certainly did not mean with the sexually immoral people of this world, or with covetous or extortioners or idolaters, since then you would need to go out of the world. Verse 11. But now I've written to you uh, not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral, covetous, idolater, reviler, drunkard, or an extortioner, not even to eat with such a person. For what, I have, for what have I to do with judging those who are outside? Uh, do you not judge those who are inside? But those who are outside, God takes care of that. He judges. Therefore, put away from yourselves this evil person. <laughs> wow. So, we look at this and we see several things. One I want you to notice is, I'm going to, this kind of goes back to the title. The title of the message this morning is simply Tolerance, Right? Eventually comes to acceptance, and then eventually we begin to celebrate. You guys have you understand? I, I need you to I need you to know that when he uses terms like the sexually immoral and fornication, specifically fornication, you know what that word is? It's pornea. You guys know where we got where we got our word pornography from. Um, and so Paul is saying this, he says, What? What are you guys doing? We can, you got a guy who is in the church. We're not talking about the world, he said. I don't know if you caught that. We're not talking about the world. The world does what the world does. The world does what they do. But if you're going to be named a brother, then there is a different way that we live. And you don't, well, isn't Paul being kind of judgmental? I mean, what, why would he have anything to say about a guy who's, uh, you know, with... Uh, his dad's wife, which is probably that his stepmom, probably, I don't know that, none of us really know that. Maybe his mom died, he married again, but still, do you, do you know that in Leviticus 18, people say, well, we don't live by, you know, the Old Testament. Listen, there are principles that live on forever, you know why? Because the Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And, and and when you you you, you know uh, people will say things like, uh, well, yeah, it's Old Testament stuff, and we you know we're not under the law anymore. We are not under the law in terms of uh, of, uh, of judgment. But ladies and gentlemen, there are still principles in the scriptures that still exist. And uh, now let's do this. Let's back up for just a moment. I would say that probably. Most of the people in here, I can't say all of them because we've got younger people, but probably every, most of the people in this room have struggled in, uh, in, in sexuality in one way or another throughout your life. I, I don't, I'm just going to guess that. Uh, in one way or another, you struggle through this. So we, can't, we, don't, we don't come to this thing and go, yeah, you know, let's talk about you know, what happened downtown yesterday. By the way, I didn't know about it until I read it this morning, uh, the Pride event. But... Uh, but, you know, it's, it's not a matter of Christians thinking somehow that we're better than somebody else. It's not a matter of that. Uh, Jesus said, for example, uh, if a man lusts after a woman, uh, he's already committed adultery in his heart. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to speak for the women here. Uh, but I'm going to say that men, uh, we have, uh, we're very, uh, uh, I'm thinking of the word, we're very prone to that. So, uh, so we don't come at it as judgment. We don't come at it as uh, as thinking somehow that we're better. That's a that's a bad place to be, because see, you've got really got these two two places. One is where somebody uh, looks down their nose at somebody because they've sinned. That's a really bad place to be. Uh, the other side of that is is that we is that we uh, celebrate. That's the other side. It's a problem. 
I, 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 meant, I think many times people are unaware of how significant uh, marriage is and what God intended in marriage. Um, it's, a, it's such a beautiful thing that God made to leave it right there. Uh, I could share a number of passages with you. Um, Hebrews 13, 4, for example. Really, we could end our message here, not. We could end our message here with Hebrews 13, 4, which says, uh, I'm going to paraphrase it for you. Uh, the marriage bed, there it is. Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled. The fornicators, uh, pornea, which is all kinds of sexual Sin is outside of marriage for fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. So I want you to think with me because what, what that just said was the only bed that's undefiled is what? The marriage bed. That's it. Now, uh, here, here's the principle. I want you to get this and I don't want you to forget it. Is that he's talking about lifestyles. Uh, many people have uh, fornicated. I don't know how many. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to know. But the point is, is that, is that uh, he's talking about lifestyle. You have somebody, uh, you know, when they have a certain kind of lifestyle, that is something that God has grieved with, and that's what was going on with this guy. They were celebrating it. Wasn't that that uh, this guy apparently was someone who was. Uh, he was bragging about it. He was glad he was doing it. And Paul said, look, let's not do that. You guys, uh, in fact, I, 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 he even said, go ahead and turn him over to Satan. Let Satan take care of him so that he'll save his spirit so that he, so that he stops this. He stops it. You follow me? So the, uh, the issue is that God intends for you and I to live a different kind of of life. Let me bring up that, that next page for me, and I appreciate it. What this is, uh, just the basic principles I wanted you guys to grab a hold of, which were uh, some just these principles that come out of here. I hope you can see this. Uh, God clearly displays a new way and principles for living, but it's empowered by the Holy Spirit. It's not something that, you know, there, there's not a bunch of these laws. Really, the, 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 uh, the beauty of the Bible is is that what God intends to happen in our Christian walk is that we become so enamored with him that the world itself does not have its appeal anymore. He wants us to find out and discover that there's so much fulfillment in our relationship with the Father, and it's really real, and it's really possible that what happens is all of a sudden the stuff of the world, we have this desire to walk in pleasing to him. That's it, you know. By the way, I'm going to say this to you. Because of the Holy Spirit, it's easy to please Him. It's easy to please God. Now, I don't know what kind of a parent some of you have been. Uh, I don't know if you're one of those parents that, that your kids just don't ever please you. Uh, but I'm one of those parents that it doesn't matter what little thing my son or my grandkids will do. Just the littlest of things, you know, and they... You guys know what I'm talking about. It's like when, when uh, say, uh, use my grandkids for an example. When they, when when one of them shares something, I just gave to one. They share with this one, and I don't try, I don't do that. You know, just like give it to one. But what I'm saying is they share their stuff. It's like, you know, this is the greatest kid in the world, right? I'm telling you that the father, for example, delights in you. In fact, the Bible says that he he sings over you. You see, as a believer. And once you start grasping a hold of this, this father that has this incredible uh, desire to be with him, and he wanted to be with you so much that he, that he, that he, that he, uh, that he gave his son. He wanted this relationship with you so much, not because, not because he uh, uh, had to and he was lonely, it's just because he loved you. It's a beautiful thing to grasp. But so what he's saying here, what, what Paul is saying is, is that our lives should be so different from the rest of the world. Don't, don't do, be doing this stuff that is, that is, that is uh, going to bring dishonor 
to God and dishonor to the church. Don't live like that. Um, I love it, and I'm going to share these thoughts and just stay with me here. Uh, you know, a, a, a professor at Princeton University said that, uh, 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 he says, I declare that June is Fidelity Month. Uh, he said, I declare it as Fidelity Month by the power invested in me by absolutely no one. <laughs> And that's kind of what we've got today. We've got this thing that said, you know, uh, you know, it's uh, Pride Month and all of that. And I need you to understand that I don't look at what happened down there. I just think, oh, it's so horrible. People, first of all, again, the world does what the world does. Just let's just relax about that. And uh, and, and and we do uh, have a, a, a responsibility to love people in the name of Jesus and share Jesus with people because sinners are everywhere. They're just everywhere. So don't, it's not, we don't have to focus on that. But what I think we ought to do as a church is we ought to do what they did yesterday. I went over to Shirley and Dale's. Uh, they, had a, they had a 50th anniversary party yesterday. And I think that's what we do. We celebrate this stuff. We've got several people in our church who have been married 50 years plus, right? And I think we ought to celebrate that. And uh, that's what God, that's what God honors, right? The marriage bed is the only bed that is undefiled. That's it. So, you know, you follow me? That is, that is the thing that's honorable. There's something else I want to share with you. I love this. Uh, ladies, you might like this. For example, in the Old Testament, it doesn't mean that it's like some law that we have to do this, but I love it. What they did was when, I'll just read it to you, in Deuteronomy 20. Four or five. I might have given that to you. I don't remember. No, I did not. When a man has taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war or begin any business. He shall be free to be at home for one year and just bring happiness to his wife whom he has taken. Is that cool or what? I mean, you know, God wanted marriage to be uh, honored. And, and special, you see. Um, and you know, look, God took, Jesus took in Matthew 19, and uh, he, took a, he took a doctrine that began in Genesis chapter 3, excuse me, chapter 2. He took this doctrine, and he says, he, he, he did it again in Matthew, and he did it in Mark, and he said, he said, he, God, made male and female. Do we stop there? It's another sermon all by itself. But look, please, when we see this stuff, and it's, it's coming at us from every angle, but see, you know, what, you know what I'm concerned about? For one thing, is just our children, for goodness sake. Uh, okay, if the church doesn't just make a stand and say, you know, we're not saying, saying to have war with anybody. We're not talking about attacking anybody. We're just talking about, hey, look, the church stands here because this is where Jesus stands. He made male and female, okay? So there are only two genders. There are just two. And I, uh, uh, if, 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 uh, if there are a lot more, then I don't know what, what the authority that you have. But the only authority the church has and can have are the scriptures. It says, uh, when, uh, excuse me, it says, let me continue reading. He made male and female. Uh, the man will leave his father and mother, and, the, and he will be joined to his wife, and the two shall be one, and let no man pull asunder. Okay. So I don't know about you guys, but I don't know. Uh, you know, where you are in your own mind. But what I want to do in my life is I simply want to, uh, I want to follow what Christ has simply taught us. It's very simple stuff. And, um, you know, and there's, I mean, look, look, I uh, got into a discussion with somebody recently about that the earth, they, they were telling me that the earth is really flat. Okay. I mean, I'm talking about a two-hour conversation that I'm really tired, 
And I just said to him, I said, look, all I want you to know is that all this is a distraction for you. It's a distraction to what's really important. And uh, let, me, let me even go another direction for a moment, okay? I'm going to go in another direction. I want you to know that, that, uh, that, that corruption exists on every level and in every entity in the entire world to some degree, all right? Now watch this. So when you, when, when you and I think about history, we think about governments, we know that, uh, that there have been you know, Stalin or, or Hitler or whatever. There's been corruption at the highest levels in the most horrible and horrendous ways. And we could talk about dozens of leaders that have been corrupt, even women that have been terribly corrupt. Um, and we could talk about our own government. And, the, and the, you know, you and I are kind of grieved about some of the corruption that that exists. I don't know everything about it because we get bits and pieces and here and there, but there's corruption. We could talk about in business, there's corruption. There's the, uh, what is it, the, uh, the guy Madoff and all of that kind of stuff. I, I, the reason why I remember that name Madoff, remember he's the guy who, the Ponzi scheme, the big Ponzi scheme, is because he made off with everybody's money. I guess he just wanted to follow his name. That's why I can always remember that. This corruption exists everywhere. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, even in the church, there's corruption that we can look at. And there's corruption where, where people have been stealing money from a church. Or there's corruption in leadership for this reason or that. There's, there's corruption that exists. But ladies, listen, God has a different plan for the church. And he has some principles. And when we... Uh, when we begin to follow his mind and his heart, we will find much peace and we will experience much of his power within the church. We will experience this. Um, let me kind of go on a little bit and I'm going to try to, I'm trying to conclude here, I'm going to try. The world does what they do because they can do no other. Tolerance, pride, celebration of immorality is not of the Spirit of God. The church is not to be simply tolerating sin to exist. And listen, when you read chapter 6, which we're in chapter 5, you're going to find that the, the, the problem comes that it's not only that it, it corrupts the church, but it corrupts that person. Uh, tolerance, pride, celebrations, not through, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So let's talk about that for a second. Uh, you see, for example, let's just say, let's just say that someone in here is a gossip. I need you to understand. You need to stop and think with me for a minute. The Bible, Thessalonians calls it a person who meddles. <laughs> Who meddle? Listen to me very carefully. What happens is, is that you corrupt other people. Let's go further. This passage here that we, we just read, I'm going to share these. Extortioners are those who get wealthy by force or manipulation. Think about that. He talks about that. He said, I don't want you guys living like this. He goes on and he says, he talks about those who are covetous. You know who, who covetous people are? And again, that's the letter. Covetous are people who have a love for stuff more than God. That stuff rubs off. You following me? Let me go further. Um, idolaters, those who worship something other than God. That could be the same thing as a, a, as a covetous person. An immoral person that he talks about here is the word pornea, pornography. See, um, a reviler is somebody who is verbally abusive, ultimately destroying others. Let me say that again. A reviler is someone who is verbally abusive to others, and they can destroy people. God doesn't want that as a part of the church either. You see, you follow me? We're not just picking... One thing, although the whole section there is mostly about, look, guys, why are you guys allowing this immorality to exist? What are you doing? In fact, he says separate from them so that they'll be ashamed. 
and Thessalonians. Um, and then he talks about a drunkard. Uh, there's nothing I would say about drinking alcohol. I do not. But I would not, uh, I would not, uh, if somebody has a beer, I've had people, you know, kind of hide beers from me and, you know, and stuff. And, and uh, you say, well, well, is it okay? Look, drunk or, drunk, drunkenness is condemned. 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 Uh, and uh, personally, like I say, I have no, I have no uh, you know, I was at a party yesterday where they were drinking and I had my water and I was just fine. And, uh, but, but that doesn't make me better than somebody. Do you understand that? It does not make me better. Not better because I drink a water and somebody beer, but I do want you to know that God is displeased with drunkenness. Here's what he says. Uh, Ephesians 5.18. It says, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you something. Being filled with the Holy Spirit has got to be a thousand times better than being drunk with wine. Got to be. It's got to be. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, what I've done is, uh, I don't know if I'll come back to this next week or not, um, but I just want us to understand that uh, God has a different plan, a different way of living for us as believers. Here's what Galatians says, ready? You're free. Don't use your freedom for the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. You're free. You really are. You know, people will say, uh, uh, I'm going to, uh, my time's gone. I get to do a baptism in a moment. But people say, well, you know what, Don? See, this is really, I mean, it's, it's a natural, it's a natural conclusion for people to say, well, there's this grace, so we can just kind of do whatever we want. Well, I mean, in, in a way, just, just, just stay with me for just a moment. But the Bible says, it, it, it answers that question. In Romans 6.1 and 6.14, it says, Shall we continue in sin that grace might abound? I mean, just think how great, how grace, how wonderful grace will look if we just keep sinning and we just keep you know, doing whatever you know, the flesh wants to do. By the way, it'll lead to misery. I'm going to say that again, folks, because God knows us. It'll lead ultimately to misery. Eventually, it'll get to misery. But the point is, is that shall we continue in, in, in sin that grace might have out? And this is what he says, God forbid. How shall you that are now dead in sin live any longer there? And how can you still continue to live in that stuff if you've been free from it? You see? It's like a bird, in, a bird being at home in the ocean and a fish being at home in a tree. There's a new life that will be in you. There's a new life. Have I stopped sinning? No, man. I haven't. Boy, my greatest joy is, is living in the Spirit. So, God has a different way for you to live. A different way. Father, I thank you for these beautiful people. I thank you for your word. I pray, Father, that you'll help us to live in the spirit and not in the lust of the flesh. It's easy to do. But I pray that you'll redeem all of us, continue to redeem all of us, such things. We love you, God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Helen's going to be getting ready. They're going to sing a song or two or three or whatever. And, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and get ready in just a moment. But if God's spoken to you and you want to pray, um, Stand with me, please, just for a moment. We can pray together. Well, 
So I'm going to have you get on your knees, I think, because this is, yeah, you okay with that? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> she, she said she can give me her age, but she's not supposed to do that. <laughs> okay. I have an incredible privilege of baptizing you tonight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Bear his likeness. Raise the newness of life. Sweet. 